Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and today I'm coming to you with a Bruger and Tomit comparison video. I have a few of my B&T guns out here, which by the way, I think are some of the finest firearms that are available to civilians here in the United States. The quality is just off the chart. But I'm going to be comparing the APC series of firearms to the GHM series, and what the differences are in my thoughts. I'm doing this video because I get asked a lot in my live streams what I think about the GHM versus the APC, are there any differences, and what do I think constitutes the difference in price points? And is it worth it to go for the APC over the GHM for whatever reasons? Well, I'm going to first show you guys my first B&T firearm I ever bought. This is my APC 45, and this is the Generation 1. It uh, has the reciprocating charging handle. And it has the original kind of generation, really cheap, kind of flimsy flip-up sights. I absolutely hate these, and I think these are the worst part about this firearm. But they say that they're designed to be uh, easily broken <laughs> if you're in a combat situation and easily replaced. They're not designed to be durable because they really want you guys running uh, some type of optic, which I'm running here as a Trijicon MRO on this. But... Besides those little shortcomings there, it's a fantastic firearm. This is a, a real joy to shoot, extremely accurate, and everything else about the gun is exceptional. The price point on these can be quite steep. I know they're not for the faint of heart. These Gen 1 guns, uh, if you can still find them, usually typically have an MSRP of about $2,200 to $2,300. That's kind of where I've seen them at. And that's about the price that I paid. Was Actually, I think I paid a little bit less. I think I paid a little bit closer to $2,000. And uh, this was a while ago before any like uh, the big panic buys and, and so forth. Um, the cosmetics of the APC series, I think, are uh, much nicer than the GHM series. This looks very much kind of like a uh, HK UMP. Uh, this is my APC-9 Pro, so this is kind of the Generation 2. It has uh, non-reciprocating charging handles. It is on both sides of the gun, so you got one here and one here. Uh, I also have the telescoping stock on this one, and they did away with those chintzy front sights, or uh, backup iron sights, and they actually provide a decent set of backup irons that are kind of like the Magpul uh, MOE set, uh, style. Uh, they seem to work uh, really well. I like them, and I think those are definitely a huge upgrade. There's also a few other upgrades that really I'm not going to talk about, which pertain to the lower, the way that the bolt uh, release is, and the magazine release, and the uh, uh, controls essentially, but we're mainly talking about the price point. Now this is being a generation two, or I think they call it the Pro Series. This typically goes for about $2,500, $2,400 to $2,500. And of course, all of these prices are before you add a stock and of course, fill out your form one for the SBR and get your tax stamp. So those are all kind of pre-prices. Uh, you would just get the, the pistol version. And of course I have my GHM 9 here, which is just my uh, Generation 1 as well. The only issue I have with this is that it doesn't feed hollow points like the Generation 2 does, but I don't really run hollow points through this thing anyway. Never had any reliability on just ball ammo. And they do say you can send them in to BNT and they will modify them, but this thing's already SBR'd and I don't really want to want to send it in. I, I wish there was something that they could send you maybe uh, to replace the um, uh, feed ramps or something uh, that would make it work better, but uh, they don't offer that. So uh, I'm going to compare these uh, two mainly because people say, well, because the price point on this, well, when I bought this, they were about $1,100. Now I see them in the $1,400 to $1,500 range. And the name GHM is really interesting because it stands for grasshopper mouse. I know that seems weird to call it or to name a gun after an animal, but the grasshopper mouse is the natural predator to the scorpion, which obviously kind of gives you the idea and the philosophy behind this gun. B&T wanted something that could compete with the CZ Scorpion closer to that price point. Now, when B&T hit the market, these APC guns, of course, were just, just cream of the crop. The machine on them is beautiful. The, uh, the bolts, it is like, it's like they run on ball bearings. I really can't explain how well built these are until you can handle one and disassemble one yourself. And you can see the quality Swiss machine that went into these. And when these first came out, they only offered the APC series. And for me, I thought it warranted the high price point. But I'm gonna tell you from a machining and finish standpoint, when it comes to the GHM series, you get exactly the same 
quality. So I don't really see a huge quality difference between the GHM series and the APC series. And this is gonna come from, a, as I said, a quality and build standpoint. You have the same finish. Uh, the bolt seems to uh, run on ball bearings. It's amazing how they can machine uh, to such precision. It's, it's absolutely mind boggling. And now the GHM series, uh, also has all the options when it comes to the you know the, the telescoping stocks and so forth. Originally, they didn't offer this stuff. They just had one folding stock, which I thought was kind of junky. Uh, I talked about that in a previous video. But now they have the options like the telescoping stocks and the like, uh, which I think really add a lot to the gun. So you really get all of the pros, I think, of the AP series when it comes to accessories, uh, but you don't get the cons. Um, so that I think is a huge bonus for this gun. But when it comes to the cosmetics, I gotta say the APC series I think is a little bit more attractive. The receiver is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit taller. And I think, as I said, just it looks a little bit more tactical to me. And I don't really know why, because function doesn't change. Um, it's just, I think it's just a, a more attractive gun. It's just the proportions, uh, the way it, it handles, the way it feels in my hand. It feels a little bit more compact. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the pin system is different. Now the lower receivers between the APC series and the, a, uh, so the APC and the GHM series are actually interchangeable. I could take this lower receiver off and put it on to my APC-9 Pro with no problem. But well, where you're going to have issues is going to be the back. There's an extra pin back here for the stock system. And I think they did this on purpose, so you just can't buy a, a lower priced GHM and slap on APC accessories. You gotta buy proprietary accessories to that particular model. I actually think this was more of a marketing thing than a, de than a design thing, uh, because so many parts and the concepts that go between the two models are, are interchangeable, and uh, it's, as I said, I think it's just because they wanted to, to sell more and make sure that the parts were not interchangeable between two models. So why do I think the GHM series is cheaper than the APC series? I don't know. I don't be very honest with you. Uh, the quality of the GHM is off the charts. If you're looking for one of these two guns and you can only afford the GHM, don't think you're getting any less of a gun. I think when it comes to how much you get, the GHM is the better deal. Another thing to talk about between the, the, the two systems that I find very interesting because the GHM is the lower price point is on all of my APC guns, they come with the three lug system. This is the APC 45. It has the three lug system. Uh, so you can use a three lug adapter if you have the 45 version or you also have the APC-9 Pro, which also has the three lug system right there. And neither of the APC, uh, uh, APC guns have a threaded barrel. Now the APC-9K, which is the shorter version of this, which I don't think you'd really want anything shorter, comes with a threaded barrel, but you can add a three lug adapter to it. But the GHM-9 offers something quite unique. And I think it borrows a lot from the, MP, the HK MP5 Navy, which you have both a three lug system and a threaded barrel. So you can essentially uh, uh, mount a suppressor using both methods on this gun. So in a way, I think that's the better option. So you have a threaded barrel and a three lug barrel all in one, giving you more options than you do with the APC, uh, APC series. Uh, which you only have the three lug system, which is a fine system, but if you're all about direct thread or maybe your silencer company doesn't offer a three lug system, you can't run it on this gun. So that's kind of the downside to this, uh, to the APC. And, I'm, and this is the higher price point firearm. From an accuracy standpoint, for me, they shoot exactly the same. The GHM-9, fantastic. I mean, you can put a very, very, very small group at good distances, very ergonomic gun no problems whatsoever. So I'm now going to talk about something I've mentioned in the past regarding the hydraulic buffer systems that both of these firearms use. I don't think it really changes the price of the gun, but it does affect, I think, the recoil. Because I'm going to flat out tell you right now, the APC series, I think, has a better recoil impulse. Now, all of these guns are extremely manageable. They might not have the same recoil as an MP5, which of course has a locking system. All of these are direct blowback, but it does have a hydraulic buffer system to kind of reduce the felt recoil. 
And the placement of that buffer system, while it is exactly the same mechanism, is in a different place. So let me adjust the camera. I'm going to take these guns apart and I'm going to show you the difference. Alright, so let me show you the main difference between the buffer systems in these two firearms. So let me go ahead and, of course, uh, remove the magazines here. And, of course, make sure that the firearms are safe. And now, I'm going to remove the pins. Now, on the APC, as I mentioned, there's only two pins. And sometimes these will come out with your fingers. Sometimes they won't. The detents on these are pretty strong. See, I, I might be able to get the back one. I don't think I can get the front one. So I might have to just gently hammer that one out just to get it started. That's all it takes. Now on these, I, I have to pull both the pins at the same time, and then simply the lower will just come right off. And then to get the stock off, you're going to need to drop this, kind of push it down, and it will come out. Got to be careful here. You don't want the recoil spring to come out. And that simply comes out, and right there is your hydraulic buffer system. That's it. That's all it is. Uh, that is what dampens the uh, recoil. And it's uh, something that seems to be kind of pressed in there. Uh, when I fold the, the stock, there's nothing back here that would release it, but there is a roll pin here in the back. So I do know that these are replaceable. You can buy them from B&T Parts. And then everything else is just uh, would come out of the gun like you would expect. Just has the uh, bolt and all that. There's nothing really special or different uh, about that. So let me pull out the GHM-9 now, and I'll show you the difference. So let me pull out the stock on this and move this one around and I'll kind of do the same thing here. Let me drop the magazine and of course make sure the firearm is clear. Now I'll take my little pin here. I'll just start these pins just so I can get them out. All right, so then I'll drop the lower, just like before. As I said, the lower receivers on both of these guns are exactly the same dimensions. The only difference is what the, was what's written on the side and what magazine they take. Now on the GHM, you gotta be careful because the recoil spring assembly here is a little bit different. Uh, the recoil springs are under pressure here. So when I drop this uh, stock here, they're going to want to come out and the stock is held on by yet another pin. So sometimes, as I said, I can push it through. This time I can't, so I'll just get this one started like all the others. I'll pull this pin out and then just drop it. And this is the one you got to be super careful of. There we go. Pull that out and then you can see the recoil spring assembly is different. And then on this gun, the uh, buffer is in the bolt. So let me go ahead and pull the bolt back here. Pull out the charging handle. And then here is the bolt. And as you can see, there's the hydraulic buffer system. So it is a little bit different. It does have a smaller um, size. That both of them, I believe, are sold at B&T Parts if you needed to replace them. But I don't know if the APC, this is from the APC 45, but I know the part number is the same for the APC 9 and APC 45, but I'm not sure if this is gonna be the same part number for both calibers on the GHM series. But that's the difference between the buffer system. So in the GHM, it's in the bolt, and on the APC series, it's on the stock. I have found that the APC has a little bit better recoil because I think the mass of the bolt of the GHM series is a little bit heavier and the fact that the hydraulic system is on the buffer, or the, sorry, the, the uh, buffer system is on the bolt, it adds more weight. You feel it just a little bit more where the APC series, I think, dampens that recoil because the bolt is lighter. So you have less inertia and less mass coming back into your shoulder. So. Does either of this change the cost of the machining or why the GHM is so much cheaper? I don't think so. Actually, to be honest with you, I find the GHM series to be a little bit more complex of a firearm than the APC series. I'm not really sure why it's cheaper other than this is just kind of their flagship model 
and this is the one that they want to sell more and charge more for. Uh, so, but maybe someone else that knows a little bit more about machining can tell me, but I can tell you from just looking at the frames and the receivers, there's a lot more machining that goes on in the GHM series than in the APC series. But that's the difference between those. So let me reassemble these and I'll kind of give you my final thoughts. All right, so what are my final thoughts? Being that this is the GHM, this is the one I probably get the more questions about, asking, is it worth it? Why is it about six, seven, sometimes even $1,000 less than its APC counterpart? Is it worth it? Do I get enough gun? I think in some ways, you get more gun than the APC. You get the threaded barrel, as I mentioned, with the three lug system. Uh, you do get, of course, the hydraulic buffer system. You get all the interchangeable lowers, which you can go with a Glock lower. Um, you have options now with various different types of stocks. Uh, if you just want to run this as a pistol, there's tons of, of braces. You get the full length Picatinny rail. You get some good uh, backup iron sights. I think you get a lot for this gun, including the fit, finish, and the machining that you get in the APC series. So if you're looking at one of these, regardless if it's a nine or 45, I'm not even sure if they have any other calibers. I know in the APC series, they also have the 10 millimeter as well. Um, it's definitely worth a look. Even though they say it's the grasshopper mouse and it's supposed to compete with the Scorpion, it's price point definitely puts it above that of the Scorpion. But right now, I think in today's times, they just go for more than MSRP, but they're relatively affordable. But, if you want the absolute cool factor and are willing to spend that extra money, the APC I think is definitely uh, the way to go. I wanna say that because this is kind of BNT's flagship model, you do have a few more accessory options and I wanna say the aftermarket support is a little bit better for this, uh, including things that you can get part replacement and things from BNT. Uh, but this is just, as I said, like their flagship model. But, so you kind of have a little bit of a status here, but when it comes to what you get for the price, I mean, you get $800 more gun than this on the GHM. Honestly, no, I don't believe you do. So if you don't really care about having the APC but want a BNT gun, the GHM is the way to go. So I'm kind of singing the GHM's praises here. I really am, but I absolutely love the looks of the APC. So there you go. So that is kind of my comparisons. Uh, between these two models and as I mentioned both of them are just fantastic firearms they're just fantastic just off the chart uh, quality uh, you cannot go wrong with either and so it just depends on your own personal tastes what you care about cosmetically uh, the GHM is a little bit longer in the frame so if you care about that uh, that is one thing about the GHM I, I don't care for. I wish it was a little bit shorter, but I do offer a K configuration version of this gun as well, which means that it's shorter on this end, not the rear end, which I think honestly kind of looks a little bit weird, but that's just me. Uh, but that's it. So if you're looking at a B&T product, I really cannot recommend them more. And I hope that this video helps somebody who might be looking at these two various platforms. So there you go. So my comparison to the B&T GHMs and the APCs. So, let me know if you have any questions and I hope this helps. And as always, thanks for watching.